exemption is supported and substantiated by the credit union's nonprofit status and the limited number of complaints that have been received by borrowers, advocates about their foreclosure avoidance practices. So this agreement removes their opposition. So I'm sure we all in each of our communities and districts have heard the horror stories from constituents regarding this foreclosure phenomenon uh, the, for the first quarter of 2010, one in six, amazingly, California mortgage loans is past due and one in eight are being seriously delinquent. So we know we're not through this yet. There were hundreds of thousands of foreclosures here in California last year. We'll have an equal number, if not more, this year. And clearly it's ripping families and communities apart. So what this bill does is simply stated as possible is extends the requirements of the HAMP program to all California mortgages, not just the 80% or so that are covered over under HAMP. So should someone be forethoughtful and recognize that they're not going to be able to keep up with their payments, they uh, fall behind in their payments, it will be the responsibility of the servicer of the mortgage loan to contact the borrower to lay out what their rights are and what the process of foreclosure could be. Should the borrower proceed to enter into or apply for a loan mo modification that there will need to be a definitive up or down dec decision, determination by the servicer whether that borrower qualifies for the loan modification before the foreclosure process can begin. Simple as that. We've heard and had testimony uh, from many who uh, enter even into loan modification, make timely payments, and then are notified that their home has been sold in foreclosure. Uh, some people are messed around by their servicer for not only six months, 12 months, 18 months, again, only to find that their home has been sold in foreclosure while they're in the midst of the process. So just make the determination up or down before you can begin the foreclosure process and notify the borrower with a written description as to why the determination has been. And then lastly, and I'll let my wit witnesses speak, uh, what this bill does have that the HAM program does not is some recourse for a borrower should there be a foreclosure and the, hold, uh, the, the home sold in foreclosure while they, the, uh, the servicer has not acted accordingly and has violated some provision of the notification processes. Only then could the recourse be a private right of action. So uh, I would ask for your I vote. Thank you very much. First witness in support. Good morning, or afternoon, I'm sorry, I've been here since morning. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members, um, I want to introduce my family. You've met my children already. That's my husband, James, back there, and those are my children, J.D. and Abigail. Um, my name is Stephanie Burriel, and I live in Exeter, California. My husband and I are small business owners and parents to six children whose ranges age from 20 to 8 years old. Since early November 2008, we have been trying to get a loan modification from Aquin, my servicer. We submitted a modification application in early December of 2008. Right after that, Aquin recorded a notice of default on December 5th, 2008. When I called Aquin, I was instructed not to worry and told as long as my application was being considered, the foreclosure proceedings would not take place. In early January 2009, I received a second modification application from Aquin. I returned the package with all requested documentation and verified with Aquin that the application was received. I waited to hear from Aquin and made many calls to Aquin over the next 60 days. Each time I was informed the application was being reviewed and not to worry about any pending foreclosure. In early March 2009, I received a third modification application from Aquin and was instructed to complete and return this final application. I completed the package, returned it to Aquin, and verified it was received. Every portion of it was received. Aquin recorded a notice of trustee sale on March 12, 2009. From March through August 2009, I received letters and phone calls from Aquin requesting additional documentation. I fulfilled every request every time 
without delay. It didn't bother me to just keep resending stuff. It wasn't, I wanted this done. So I did it every single time. In July of 2009, Aquin began to request a divorce decree between me and my husband. We're not divorced, we're not separated, we're not even mad. Although you are short on time. So if you could please conclude soon. Okay. This request continued through August. Each time the decree was requested, I informed Aquin my husband and I were not divorced and no such documents existed. In early September, I telephoned Aquin for an update on my application. I was informed my application was at the final stage with new impound amounts being figured. I was told to expect a loan modification the next couple of weeks and that I should call when I received it. September and October passed and I did not receive anything at all from Aquin. I telephoned Aquin on November 3rd, though Aquin represented informed me that my house was sold in foreclosure proceedings held on October 14th of 2009. I asked to explain further. Yeah, you do need to, I, I appreciate the importance yeah. of the story and the fact that you came here to testify is very meaningful. You have exceeded the time that we allow for witnesses, so if you could wind up, please. Okay. Since we have learned of the foreclosure sale of my home, I have reached out for assistance. The escalation team formed by the Treasury Department for problems with making homes affordable program were kind and professional, but in the end, Aquin refused to account for the wrongful foreclosure. The Treasury Department did not pursue the matter any further. I was never given the opportunity to rebut Aquin's claims, and Aquin was not asked to support their claims. Even though a state senator's office had tried to help me with the complaint to the Treasury Department, the Treasury Department closed the file. My family and I remain in our home today, but we are fearful to leave our home, unsure if Aquin will find a way to lock us out or send someone else to intimidate us. We've had people come to the house wanting to lock us out. We have not been able to find legal assistance to try and get our house back, but we are continuing to try and end this nightmare and stay in our home. Thank you. Other witnesses in support? If you could be relatively brief, please. I will. Uh, chairman and members, thank you for um, hearing us on this very important issue. I'm Lisa Sitkin from Housing and Economic Rights Advocates. We are a nonprofit legal services agency in Oakland. and. Um, I, I just want to speak very briefly, I will keep it brief, to um, the reasons that we we actually have sponsored and, and worked very hard over the past many months on this bill. Um, what we see every day in our work, and we are also sort of a clearinghouse where we see housing counselors around the state coming to us with questions, is borrowers who are unclear about the process that they find themselves in, borrowers who are, in many, many cases, more than we would have ever expected being foreclosed on while they still have um, applications under review, and borrowers who are denied without getting any explanation of that denial. In cases where we do get an explanation, we've had many, many cases where there has been a grave error, for example, in calculating income, and we've been able, uh, through hard work and advocacy, to get something undone. But there are far too many cases we've seen where a foreclosure has happened, and only through the accident of someone finding an advocate are they able to get a modification. If I could add one more thing. I just would like the committee to um, note that in the most recent round of amendments, we've made an additional quite big um, change to the bill and that the private right of action that is there does now have a cure provision that would allow the servicers to self-correct and avoid any litigation, so. Thank you for your testimony. Others in support? Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Norma Garcia, Consumer Union, in strong support of this bill, we ask for your aye vote. Thank you. Pedro Morillas from the California Public Interest Research Group, uh, in strong support, ask for your aye vote, thanks. Paul Leonard, uh, Center for Responsible Lending, and strong support, and ask for your high vote. Thank you. Any other witnesses here in support? Okay. Brian Augusta. Let's try that again. Brian Augusta. <coughs> Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Brian Augusta on, the on behalf of the California Reinvestment Coalition. Thank you for that emotional and compelling <laughs> me too. <laughs> Are there witnesses here in opposition? Welcome. Good afternoon. Please. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. Uh, Kevin Gould with the California Bankers Association in strong opposition. You know, we do recognize over the last couple of years a need for reform in the mortgage system, and I think we've been quite successful at passing more than 20 measures. Uh, we've worked collaboratively with this legislature. Those measures have gone to the governor. More than 20 have been signed. We've looked at all aspects of the mortgage process, everything from application all the way through REO transactions. Unfortunately, on this particular measure, it's hard to find common ground when the promotion of litigation is such a fundamental goal. With regard to loan modifications, if you look at the U.S. Treasury data that came out uh, under the Home Affordable Modification Program, the results are working. The uh, President's program has shown tremendous success. Of the 1.675 million loans that were identified as being eligible for a loan modification, 1.5 million have had extended a trial modification. We think that's successful. With regard to uh, this particular measure, we worked very closely in 2008 with Senator Parada on SB 1137. This bill is the foundation for, uh, for that particular, for, for SB 1137 was the foundation for this bill. Essentially with 1137, even though we thought that was a good product, we've had hundreds of compliance related questions and we've been subject to a number of lawsuits uh, in regard to compliance. This measure is far more complex uh, we believe that uh, the private right of action is problematic. And in addition, we think that one of the impacts of this particular measure is that it promotes strategic defaults. Strategic defaults are those circumstances where the, the borrower has the ability to pay, but they're underwater on the property, and so they start to miss their payments strategically. This particular measure does not have a tender requirement, so there's no requirement in the bill that the borrower show any good faith that they have an interest in staying in the home. Hypothetically, under the bill, what could happen is you could have a borrower who hasn't made a payment for an entire year, at some point find an error in the notice of declaration or in the non-approval notice, and even though they haven't made a mortgage payment for a year, they can then sue the lender under the private right of action and seek statutory damages. I know my time is short. I'll just conclude on one point. With some of the federal district court cases that have uh, come about as a result of Senate Bill 1137 and Section 2923.5, uh, the federal district courts have held that the bill is preempted, that that section is preempted with respect to federally chartered financial institutions. If that theory continues to hold, then this bill as well will be preempted for those federally chartered institutions. And I understand that there was an amendment with respect to the credit unions. One of the questions we would ask is who would be left to comply with the proposal and essentially what we think is there would be a discriminatory set of policies with respect to what type of lender a particular borrower sought a loan under. For those reasons, we're opposed to the measure, respectfully ask for your no vote. Yeah, before we proceed to the next witness, and I'm very cognizant of the fact that both the Republican and Democratic caucuses have important meetings that are at least halfway done, so I'm very aware of that, colleagues, but just real quickly. Um, I, I am among those here who really just disdains strategic defaults. But this is a bill about being sure that borrowers are cognizant of loan modification opportunities before their house is sold. How does apprising a borrower of the availability of a loan modification, which is a thrust of the bill, promote strategic defaults? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, I mean, essentially under the bill, anybody who is in a delinquency would be afforded an opportunity to submit a loan application or submit an application for a loan modification. Under the proposal, uh, there's no requirement to tender. Because of that requirement, we think that people will take advantage of it. They will continue to delay. They won't make their mortgage payment. And at the end of that process, because they haven't been required to give some level of tender to show a good faith interest, there's nothing that they have to do to show that they're interested in staying in their home. And at the end of that process, if they find an error in the notice of, of default, in the declaration that's filed with it, or in the non-approval notice, they have the ability to sue and to receive statutory damages. Okay. Again, it's because of the fact that they don't have to tender to show any interest in staying in the home that we think it will promote strategic defaults. Okay, we have seen strategic. Thank you. thank you. Next witness in opposition. Uh, Mr. Chair, Pat Senzala with KP Public Affairs here on behalf of the California Mortgage Bankers Association who also opposed the bill. Mr. Chair, I can give you kind of a sense of the practical impact of this bill, at least how we see it. Um, in a very short time frame, I'll try to keep it very short. Essentially, what the bill does is it creates a statutory framework that doubles the minimum time frame between the delinquency and the actual foreclosure sale if a lender servicer offers modification programs without any requirement that the borrower make a, a single payment during that time frame. 
By my calculation, it would take approximately 125 days to 155 days um, to get through the process prior to being able to file the notice of default. And once that notice of default is filed, you have a, essentially a 111-day statutory time frame that would begin to, to tick off between that and the sale. Um, within that time frame, there's no requirements to make a payment. The borrower, once notice of default is filed, um, uh, and the information is provided to the borrower from the lender servicer if, if the modification was turned down, could then file an injunction after the notice of default is filed and stop the foreclosure from moving forward. Um, that was with the most recent set of amendments that were amended in, into the bill. Um, so why is that a, a problem um, to have essentially a 350-day time frame um, given the current uh, time it takes to get through a foreclosure today, which for uh, foreclosure radar estimates about 226 days. The reason why it's a problem is to the extent that we create a statutory framework that delays the foreclosure process, we're cementing in time the um, current housing downturn. It's going to affect folks that are making their payments. It's going to affect the values of properties in, in California, and it's going to have a negative impact on, on those properties. For those reasons, we're opposed. Thank you. Now, Mr. Huffman, I know, has a question Are you afterwards. Very good. Other witnesses in opposition, please. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, Colleen Monahan, Deputy Commissioner with the Department of Corporations and also representing the Department of Real Estate, we're opposed to this legislation. I apologize to uh, Senator Leno and the committee for the late, late letter. Thank you. Others in opposition? Mr. Chair and members, Scott Governor, on behalf of the California Financial Services Association, in opposition for the reasons previously stated. Mr. Chair, members, Mark Brigad on behalf of the Cal Chamber, also opposed to the bill. Julie Broyles here on behalf of the California Mortgage Association, also opposed. Sherry McKee representing the California Credit Union League. We have been working with the author and the sponsors, and we were able to reach an agreement this morning on amendments that will remove our opposition to the bill. Thank okay, you. Thank you very much. Other witnesses in opposition? Mr. Huffman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think this is a good bill, and I'm happy to offer a motion to approve it. I know that we have heard many bills uh, in this institution and in this committee on this challenge of protecting uh, homeowners who are in these terrible foreclosure situations, getting them information, giving them safeguards. And I think it's entirely appropriate that the committee has allowed multiple solutions and different solutions to advance for consideration in the body. And so I'm going to uh, proudly offer the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Mr. Hagman. Just a comment. I'm, I'm assuming this bill will still get out, but um, I have to <laughs> stay off this bill at this point. But I'm just wondering, I'm looking to the history. We have passed a number of, of laws or bills here in the last 12 months. The federal government's doing their point at it. At some point, when has the pendulum gone too far for us responding as a body, as a government, to protect our consumers and still allow the ability for the businesses when the, the money of hopefully, you know, making prudent loans and taking risk and be able to do that to still keep them in our state for those who do afford and keep those loans. And I'm just not, not saying if um, all these different things we have taken so far to protect the consumers, have they caught up in the systems? And we're going to find examples of hardship out there because we were in a very bad economic time. But if we look at the numbers of um, unemployment, what, at the highest point, we're at 14, 15 percent, yet we're having close to 30, 40 percent default rates on, on homes. That's bigger than what we have for the unemployment problem. A lot of people are getting underpaid for what they used to do or working part time. So I know all the numbers don't add up exactly. But I just want to make sure that we're, we, we do this in measures that we protect our, our residents and our public. At the same time, we don't swing the pendulum too far where it makes it where we don't have any more lending institutions in the state who want to give out loans for good businesses. So I'm going to stay off. Thank you, Mr. Hagman. Out. All right. So we have a motion. We have a second. Sure. Chair. Mr. Leno, would you like to close? Thank you. Dare I ask for 30 seconds just to no, counter some of the information? The timeline on our bill, absolutely no different from HAMP. Requirements for tender, absolutely no different from HAMP because it requires no tender. Strategic default, one of two things will happen in the case of a strategic default. That individual will have to apply for loan modification. If he or she does, Guess what? They're going to be turned down because they can afford to pay their mortgage. If they don't apply, bill doesn't apply to them. It's a false argument. And then lastly, this has been very narrowly drafted. There's a sunset of the end of 2012, so it's just two years. 
and it only applies to loans that were made up to January 1st, 2009. So there's nothing moving forward on this. This is to correct past history. You've heard the horror story. She's just one of hundreds of thousands. And so I'd ask for your eye vote. Thank you very much, Senator. It's been moved and seconded. Call the roll. Fear. Aye. Fear, aye. Tran. No. Tran, no. Brownlee. Aye. Brownlee, aye. Evans. Hagman. No. Hagman, no. Huffman. Aye. Huffman, aye. Jones. Aye. Jones, aye. Knight. Monning. Saldana. Saldana, aye. That bill has five votes, requires one more. So here's, thank you very much, Senator. So here's what we're going to thank do. Thank you, Mr. Chair, committee members. Of course. Uh, Right now, I want to be sure that members of both caucuses who have not, who are not here at the moment, are told to return right now in two minutes from the time people arrive. We can conclude the business on our agenda, but we have multiple bills on call. So if you have voted on every bill, then feel free to go on to the next business. If you have not voted on every bill, please remain and let's urgently contact the remaining members so we can conclude the business on today's file. Let me, in the meantime, lift calls and see if we get anywhere on that. Item number nine, SB 1046 by Senator Cogdill. The vote currently is three nothing. Uh, call the absent members, please. Fear. Aye. Fear, aye. Evans. Hagman. Aye. Hagman, aye. Huffman. Aye. Huffman, aye. Jones. Aye. Jones, aye. Knight. Saldana. That Saldana. bill has sufficient votes and is out. Item number 10. SB 1098 by Senator Corbett. The current vote count is three to two. Chair voting aye. Call the absent members. Brownlee. Aye. Brownlee aye. Evans. Hagman. Aye. Hagman aye. Huffman. Aye. Huffman aye. Jones. Aye. Jones Bill aye. Bill Hassishan votes and is out. Item number 12, SB 1149 by Senator Corbett. The current vote is three to two. Chair voting aye. Call the absent members, members please. Brownlee. Brownlee aye. Evans. Hagman, Huffman, aye. Huffman, I Jones, aye. Jones, I. That bill has sufficient votes and is out. Item number 13, SB 1150, uh, se pardon me, 1178 by Senator Corbett. The vote is four nothing. Chair voting aye. Call the absent members. Brownlee, aye. Brownlee, aye. Evans, Hagman, no. Hagman, no. Huffman, aye. Huffman, I Jones, aye. Jones, I Knight. That bill has sufficient votes and is out. Item number uh, 14, SB 1192 by Senator Oropesa. The vote count is three to one. Chair voting aye. Call the absent members. Evans, Hagman, no. Hagman, no. Huffman, Huffman, I Jones, aye. Jones, I Monning. That bill has five votes and remains on call. Item number uh, 16 by Senator Corbett. The vote count is three to one. Chair voting aye. Call the absent members, please. Brownlee. Aye. Brownlee, aye. Evans. Hagman. No. Hagman, no. Huffman. Aye. Huffman, aye. Jones. Aye. Jones, aye. That bill has sufficient votes and is out. Item number 18 we just did. Item number 20, SB 1454. The vote count is three to two. Chair voting aye. Please call the absent members. Huffman. Aye. Huffman, aye. Jones. Aye. Jones, aye. Knight. Monning. Saldana, Saldana, aye. That bill has sufficient votes and is out. So the bills for, on, which are still on call, let's try again. Item number four by Mr. Wright, SB 909, five nothing, chair voting aye. Brownlee, aye. Brownlee, aye. Huffman, aye. Huffman, aye. That bill has enough votes and is out. Item number six by Senator Oropesa, SB 933. The vote count is five to one. Chair voting aye. Brownlee. Aye. Brownlee, aye. Huffman. Huffman, aye. That bill has sufficient votes and is out. Item number eight, SB 1035 by Senator Hancock. The vote count is five, one, five to three. Chair voting aye. Please call the absent members. Brownlee. Aye. Brownlee, aye. Huffman. Huffman, aye. That bill has sufficient votes and is out. So by my accounts, the only bills that we have yet to deal with are item number 14 by Senator Oropesa and item number 18 by Senators Leno and Steinberg. Um, call the absent members on item number 18, please. Vote count is 5-2. Chair voting aye. Evans. Evans, aye. Knight. Monning. 
Okay, that bill has enough votes and is out. So let's return to item number 14, SB 1192 by Senator Oropesa. Five to, to two, chair voting aye. Evans. Evans, aye. Monning. All right, so I believe we have now dispensed with every item on our agenda. Now, for members who wish to add on, this is a great time to do that. Um, and uh, with that, uh, pending the addition of members who want to add on, uh, we, other business is completed and we'll adjourn upon the conclusion of people voting on, adding on. Thank you very much for your patience, everybody, and for your hard work.